वेलकम ऑल इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट मैक्सवेल्स फोर्थ इक्वेशन सो मैक्सवेल्स फोर्थ इक्वेशन इज जनरली बेस्ड ऑन एम्पियर सर्किटल लॉ डेट वी डिस्कस्ड इन द अर्लियर लेक्चर्स सो इट इज बेस्ड ऑन एम्पियर सर्किटल लॉ Now let us discuss first Ampere circuit law. So, if we write the mathematical expression for Ampere circuit law, then it is like so. Here is the expression for Ampere circuit law. According to the Ampere circuit law, the line integral of the magnetic field density along a imaginary closed path is equal to the product of the Current that is enclosed by that path, and also the permittivity of the medium. Here, mu mu naught is equal to permittivity of medium. and this is our ampere circuit law let us give it as equation number 1 so here is the theoretical part associated with ampere circuit law so here is the line integral of magnetic field that is here and along a imaginary closed path is equals to product of the current that is represented by i enclosed by the path and also the permeability that is mu now let us move on to the next point that is we also know that b can also be written as mu not into h if we substitute the value of b in the equation number 1 then the equation number 1 can also be rewritten as line integral h dot dl equals to i because this mu not will get cancel out with this mu not so we get this expression after cancellation now we also know that the current is equals to integration over closed surface j dot ds here this j is nothing but current density or the current passing per unit area so if we substitute the value of i in this expression then we get line integral h dot dl is equals to integration over surface j dot ds so this is the expression that we get after putting the value of current now to calculate the differential form of maxwell's fourth equation we have to apply the stokes theorem but before applying the stokes theorem let us discuss that why we are applying it because in the lhs part we have the line integral and in the rhs we have surface integral the stokes theorem is used for showing the relationship between line integral and the surface integral and this h dot dl can also be represented in terms of surface integral that's why we are applying the stokes theorem so applying the stokes theorem we can write this h dot dl as in terms of surface integral that is del cross h dot ds is equals to this rhs part j dot ds so this is the expression that we get after applying stokes theorem 
Now we move this RHS part in LHS to remove the surface integrals. So it can be written as del cross H dot ds minus j dot ds equals to 0. On taking the ds common we can write it combinedly as the surface integral of del cross h minus of j into ds equals to 0. To take that differential form of the Maxwell's fourth equation, we have to remove this surface integral because here in the RHS part, here is 0. So we can easily remove this surface integral. On removing surface integral, we get del cross h minus j is equals to 0 or we can also say that del cross h is equals to j this is our equation number 2 now after finding this equation Maxwell checked its validity by the help of equation of continuity. So Maxwell checked its validity by equation of continuity. So to check its validity, Maxwell take uh, equation of conductivity that is given as del dot j is equals to minus of del rho by del t. Here is del del rho by del t. Let me give it as equation number three. Since the divergence of current density is always negative of the rate of change of volume charge density. That's why this is according to the equation of conductivity. Now on taking the divergence of equation number 2, we get taking divergence of equation 2 we get del dot del cross h is equals to del dot j. So here in the RHS and in the LHS we are applying the divergence on both sides. Now for the vector identity we know that by vector identity we know that the divergence of a curl that is given as divergence of curl of h is equals to 0 this is that we get after applying vector identity so applying this concept here we can say that this del dot j is equals to 0 so del dot j is equals to 0 only this is our equation number 4 but we also get the equation number 3rd according to the equation of continuity and according to the Maxwell this del dot j is equals to 0 on comparing equation number third and equation number four, we 
Maxwell get to know that the experiment that is done by the Maxwell which implies that the divergence of j is equal to 0 is wrong because the equation of continuity implies that the divergence of j is equal to negative of del rho by del t. That's why Maxwell added a parameter that is termed as displacement current density in this expression. So to make this equation number 2 valid, the Maxwell introduced a concept of displacement current density. So we can write the modified equation number 2 as modified equation 2 is given by the Maxwell as del cross h is equals to j plus jd here this jd is nothing but displacement current density so this jd represent displacement current density and the displacement current density is given as del d by del t this is the basic expression for displacement current density now if we substitute this displacement current density that is the value of jd in this equation then we get our new equation as del cross h equals to j plus del d over del t so this is the final expression or the equation according to the Maxwell and this equation is nothing but Maxwell's fourth equation in differential form this is Maxwell fourth equation so from the equation number two the Maxwell derived that del cross h is equal to j but according to the equation of continuity it implies that the value of del dot j is equal to minus del rho by del t and this contradicts the experiment of Maxwell's that's why Maxwell added a new concept that is displacement current density in its expression and the modified expression for the Maxwell's fourth equation is become del cross h is equal to j plus del d by del t so this is all about Maxwell's fourth equation thank you